How do you feel about the recent attack on Syria? Uh, very sad, very tragic. Again, it's meaning, meaningless uh, demonstration by our president that just is more of the same. I think we're going backwards. Uh, diplomacy is the way we evolve the world. Uh, there's a big conversation here. It was a tragedy, but this sort of reaction to it is childish at best. What kind of reaction do you think we'll be seeing from Russia, from Syria, from Iran? Uh, I think it'll be a conversation that's e e equally blowhard at one level. I think we tend to take it farther away from the realm of a good conversation that could be about the great things. We do have an excellent treaty with Iran in place right now. This will definitely jeopardize that. We've got to look for a way to take the kids out of the uh, playroom or the sandbox. And Putin and Trump, I mean, they're just acting like idiots. And it's really unfortunate. I love that you said that about the kids in the sandbox, because it seems a lot of our politicians tend to just bluster and blow hard instead yeah. of actually making exactly. changes. Exactly, totally. And again, other things could have happened over the last few years. But the fact that I've lived my life with America at war, I am sad about every day. And these are wars. We can pretend, but these, this is war. And it's not to be treated lightly. So the official reason that we had this strike on Syria was to destroy some of the chemical weapons factories. Do you think that's accurate, or do you think there's something else at play here? Uh, I think that the result of the 1917, uh, 1917, 2017 events when Trump first took were totally felonious and they reproved that. They had no real impact on anything. He was thinking, well, this is going to get me a little bit farther down the field. So he was thinking, but uh, I see no reason or evidence there. And the fact that the Syrians are not letting the uh, investigators come in to really look at it, to determine it was there, uh, has to raise the question, what is there? Is it real or not real? It's more of this fake news proposition, which is uh, becoming everyday news, sadly. Interesting. A lot of people are saying that the U.S. needs to step in more when it sees human rights violations across the world. Do you think that's accurate, or do you think we need to look to our own shores? Uh, I think we got to look to our own shores, but we have to look there, but without a gun in our hand. We have guns on the table on both sides now. We have guns in America, and we have gun guns on the world, and it's a tragedy, a total travesty. So. Is there anything you'd like to tell our politicians today about how you want to see them handle these events? I'd like to bring them, these are declarations of war, and I thought, in my understanding of the Constitution, that uh, this is an issue for Congress to decide, not the President to decide, and how can we get a full conversation on all parties going and put out the proper chains of diplomacy. Uh, it's interesting that at one level in the news we're led to believe that the English and French are with us, and I like to believe that. Uh, uh, Merkel, I mean, we've got some really interesting people there. And uh, but we're just not behaving as we should and have gained the respect to we should be leaders in the world, collaborators in a world situation and a conversation. And uh, we're losing the opportunities with demonstrations like we just see. But uh, again, he's too busy talking about other issues of malfeasance of his attorney and uh, other stormy events that have been going on. So we'll just see where it goes. I've got one last question for you. So you briefly brought up that Congress is actually supposed to be the one who's yes. declaring war. Yes. It seems recently more and more the Constitution, our government is not being run strictly as it was set out. Would you agree with that? Totally, totally agree. All we can worry about is the Second Amendment, which should be changed in Constitutional Congress and get rid of the whole gun problem to begin with. And that's another congressional issue. And the issues they should be responsible for, like declarations of war and things like that, uh, nobody's taking responsibility. The Congress is a sham right now, sadly, and hopefully this is a year of change, and it's just not about... Is it, it's, we're, Republicans and Democrats talk with respect and discuss, negotiate, and lead our country to success, and it's not bipartisan. It is bipartisan. It's not this one-sided affair. Thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. I feel I couldn't agree more with Bill, but I take maybe a different position because my accent is a German. So I just got dual citizenships. Uh, local boy Bra Barrack pulled me through as one of the last ones before he uh, is down. And so, um, yeah, it's very sad. It reminds me of when I first came to the United States, it was a quarter of a century ago that dates me. And uh, I was in school, and my friend will never forget the moment where. We went to a little hill that 
Nebraska doesn't have a lot, but there was one hill we were skiing at Nebraska, and after that was kind of a foggy night, and we turned on on my little cranky FM radio in my car, and they announced the Gulf War. And it was, I will never forget this moment. So I had this deja vu just these past days ago here of, of that event, and I was thinking, well, again, that was a quarter of a century ago, and here we are and things haven't improved for the better. And my peers back in school, they said, how can you go to a country where someone like Bush runs it? And you know, today I think Bush looks pretty okay compared to what we have right now. So again, I, I'm very sad about that development here. And uh, coming back to your question that you asked Will about, um, should we still do that? I believe from a European point of view, and I'm probably more patriotic than many Americans. I'm Americano and I love America and I probably have a more sort of sentimental view of America or a more nostalgic view, more idealist view. And I think the chance is to basically stop playing world police as America and seeing we're ahead of our time, we were the emperors and this is over. Let's concentrate on our own issues and we are architects, so we come from infrastructure and all these things, there's so much to fix in the country which I think America, when it was playing world police, didn't have the time to do that. But I think now is the time to basically almost pull out of anything and basically say we're going to concentrate on our own. That's my point. You have a very interesting and unique perspective, seeing as you, you are having dual citizenship here. How do you think the recent events in Syria will affect the, the balance of power on a global scale? Um, I, I hope it will not. I mean, we're all super freaked out when we heard the news, that's declaration of war, and it reminded me of the false missile alert here to a certain degree. These are these moments of shocks where you say, and you start to rethink where you are, And but pretty soon you turn on the TV and it was pretty much, oh, you guys all calm down and it's not going to be anything. It's gonna, not going to be World War III. And so um, I think it, it is just like if we... If we continue to be aggressive, it's it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to have an impact uh, one day or another. So I think we need to train now to be, as well said, to be civil to each other, to talk to each other, try to negotiate things, try to overcome differences. That's definitely the way to go. So when we see human rights violations like were allegedly happening in Syria, what do you think should the U.S. How should the U.S. respond? I think, I think mainly it's an issue of the people over there and obviously some of them are not able to take care of it themselves. So I think we should support them in all civil ways and can consult and advise in a way, send ambassadors over there. I mean, again, going back in time when for me, you know, when I hear about Jimmy Carter, um, this is probably the last, well, I shouldn't say Obama was good too, but, you know, back in the days, the president who really sort of, and he's still stepping up and he's 94 and not to be taken down and he had cancer and just tried some sort of non-traditional treatment and he went and then he got hospitalized in uh, Canada because he was building homes for architects for humanity. I mean, this is a kind of attitude that I think Americans are good at and they've always been appreciated for us, so just go there and be an advisor, be a consultant, that would be a good way. I also want to ask you one more question. How do you think the world, not just the United States, not just our president or our Congress, how do you think the world should be reacting to human rights violations that are happening all across the world? Uh, with care and consideration, I would say. I don't have a solution how sort of practically, and and but I think you know, we should all get together. I mean, we should basically condemn it and we should all, the ones who are thinking about it critically, constructively, should get together, sit down and, and figure out ways how to basically de-escalate the situation. Thank you both. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. The other thing that should have been talked about is the United Nations is there for that purpose. We should stop belittling the United Nations that is why we are at peace still, whether we realize it or not. And the fact that we are stepping, if, if it didn't exist, the White House right now would be very happy. And the tragedy, we just came out of the UNESCO World Heritage Fund, and we stepped aside from that. We are not leading, collaborating in this world toward peace or civility or respect for our history at all right now. But the UN is an answer that should be used much more effect and support and that's in place. It's been a long time. 
Well, I do have a question for you about that. What happens when the countries who are committing these human rights violations are sitting on the UN and have allies on the UN who have their back? Then what? Uh, it's really about the world growing up and trying to resolve things. And as long as we keep making excuses like that, he said, she said, they said, we won't get anywhere. But again, there is a forum there to have that conversation. And with the quality of leadership that should be there, we all have to lead with that. Yes. Yeah, big, big word should. I mean, you made that reference, that perfect reference to the kids in the sandbox. I mean, if there's a kid misbehaving in that sandbox, the teacher goes and, in best case, brings it up and said, let's sit down all together and, you know, what this kid has done is not okay. Kid, you understand that? And the other one, see, oh, that's the way to go, like grow up, right? Yeah, yeah. And again, the media has the potential to lead and not really be, again, this sort of, you know, constant 24-7 thing, but really the quality, leadership, editorship, the spoken word, I mean, there is truth, there isn't fake news, it's all there, and we can't belittle your role and turn you into the clowns in the, in the conversation. Because in that regard, thank you for doing this. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Well, thank you both for volunteering, because we had a long search, and these were our only volunteers, and I'm really grateful. Good. All right, thank you, thank you everyone. All right. Thank you.